Hi, all my crafty friends, and welcome back to Designs by Gaddis. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found my channel. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. By doing so, you will help others, just like yourself, be able to find my home decor DIY videos. Today, I will be making this adorable faux wood farmhouse sign using a file I got from Design Bubbles. If you have been following me for any length of time, you know I love their files and their bundles. I'll leave a link in the description for the file I used here. I used this Christmas sign from Dollar Tree. I turned it over and removed the residue from the back. I then used ivory chalk paint and painted the entire back and sides of the sign. For this sign, I only used one coat of paint and I made sure all my paint lines were going in the same direction. I used a sanding block to rough up the paint a little and to give the sign more of a distressed look. I then used a pencil and a square and drew lines on the sign. I then used some gray chalk paint and painted the lines to make the sign look like painted wood boards. I also added smudges using the dry brush method for more of a realistic look. I then painted the entire sign with matte Mod Podge. I did this to see if the vinyl would stick better, and it did. I'm going to start doing this every time. I used my hot air gun to dry the Mod Podge. I cut and weeded the vinyl and used transfer paper to transfer the image to the sign. I then used a piece of black and white buffalo ribbon and inserted it into the holes that were already in the sign. I was going to add more to the sign, but decided I liked it just like this. If you wanted, you could add a bow and some florals to it, but I really just liked it being plain. This is a simple and easy project for any skill level. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Today, I will be showing you how you can make this beautiful beaded wreath using a Dollar Tree heart-shaped wreath form. I first tried to cut the wire frame with some wire cutters, but that just didn't work. So I took the frame outside and decided to try using my Dremel tool to cut the wire. I placed a metal cutter on it and began working on the metal, and that worked perfectly it was so much easier than trying to use the wire clippers now that i had the smaller heart cut out of the wreath i needed to smooth it out so the beads would fit onto it i simply used the dremel tool and removed the sharp edges from where i had cut the smaller wreath off of the larger one i also cut the wire in half so i could put the beads on the wreath I took the wire wreath back inside to string the beads. I used a pair of pliers to straighten the top of the heart so I could slide the beads onto both sides of the wreath form more easily. I used 18 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and 25 millimeter beads to complete the wreath. At the bottom of the heart, I placed two 16 millimeter beads, one on each side of the heart. Next, I placed four 20 millimeter beads on each side. Next was four 25 millimeter beads on each side. I then started going smaller with the beads. Four 20 millimeter beads. And I then used two 16 millimeter beads on each side. I used my pliers again to turn the heart back up where I had straightened it earlier and placed another two 16 millimeter beads to finish it off. This was a little tricky because the beads kept wanting to slide off the wreath. 
I placed hot glue inside the last bead and fed the little bit of metal I had left into the last bead and hot glued all of it together. I used a piece of burlap ribbon to create the hanger. After cutting it to the length I wanted, I folded it in half and sealed it with a small line of hot glue. I then used hot glue again and glued the burlap into place on the middle bead. I already loved the way the wreath was turning out, simple and elegant. But to finish the wreath off, I used two pieces of lamb's ear and hot glued them under the burlap ribbon. I made a small bow and glued it to the top. I love it. This beautiful heart wreath can be used year round because I used neutral colors. I think I will be making a larger one next time. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I love this idea because this oversized gnome will work for any occasion by adding seasonal accessories to him. The first thing I did was set the tomato cage up. This was a little tricky and it took me a while to figure it out. The first thing I did was tape the bottom circle to the frame so it wouldn't move. I then taped the top of the tomato cage into a point. After taping the top, I used tape to hold the circle parts in place because they kept moving and wouldn't stay where I wanted them to. I cut the strings off of a Dollar Tree mop head. I have used this mop head in previous videos and had to use a second mop head for this. If you're using a new one, it should only take one for this project. Next, I took a piece of white cardstock and cut it. I have found that it's easier to glue the string to the cardstock than to glue it directly to the knob. I glued the first row of string directly to the cardstock using hot glue. I wanted the beard to be thicker, so then I glued another row of string on top of the string I had glued onto the cardstock. After a couple of attempts to make this gnome, I finally figured out how to do it. The first thing I did was add three pieces of cardstock to the bottom of the cage. I did this so the fabric wouldn't fold into the holes between the three round pieces. I then trimmed the bottom so it would sit flat. I used this gray and white baby blanket from Dollar Tree for the base of the gnome. I cut it down to size and glued it to the cardstock. I then glued the bottom of the blanket to the cardstock. I positioned the beard where I wanted it to be, and I glued one end first, then glued the middle, and finally the other end. I was afraid the beard would pull the blanket off since it was a little heavy. I simply glued the top of the blanket to the cardstock also. Next, he needed a nose. I used a ping pong ball from Dollar Tree and painted it with a tan chalk paint. It took two coats for an even coverage. I then measured to find the center of the beard and glued the nose there. I didn't like the way it looked under the nose, so I used some more of the mop head and glued it under the nose and trimmed it to the same length as the rest of the beard. For the hat, I used these two gray and white hand towels from Dollar Tree. I first glued the back towel just below the top of the beard, and then I did the same thing with the towel on the front. I pulled the towels up over the top of the cage and gathered them together to form a hat. 
I then used a piece of string to tie the hat at the top. And I'm sorry, but I just did not have a good way to set up my camera while I was trying to do this. I think this oversized gnome is so stinking cute. I can't wait to add some Valentine accessories to him. That video will be coming out soon, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. For this project, I used this tinsel covered heart from Dollar Tree. I removed all the tinsel and then cut all the little pieces from the edge. At first, I was going to use all the tassels you see on the back side of my table, but then I decided to use flowers from Dollar Tree instead. I had already purchased the flowers, so why not? I removed them from the stems and sorted them according to color. I wanted to make an ombre colored heart. For the first two rows, I placed the white roses. I used hot glue to attach the flowers to the plastic frame. On the middle two rows, I used the light pink roses and hot glued them to the frame. On the last two rows, I used the dark pink roses and hot glued them to the plastic frame. <laughs> I did mess up in one spot, but when I finished, the mistake wasn't really noticeable on the front, so I just left it instead of trying to remove it. Once I had all the rows filled in, I turned the heart over to look at the front to see where I needed to add more flowers to cover up the frame. I continued looking for bare spots and adding flowers until the entire frame was covered and I liked the way it looked. To finish the wreath off, I added a piece of twine to the back, tied it to each side, and then hot glued it to hold it in place. I kept it short so the hanger wouldn't be seen when the wreath was hung up. I was going to add a wooden love piece to the middle, but decided I liked the wreath just the way it was. This wreath turned out amazing, and it only cost me about $10. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos, and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I used this stack book set I had actually used for my Christmas tea air tray. I simply removed the vinyl and the twine. I'll leave a link in the description for how to make wood stack books tutorial. I used some handmade pink chalk paint to paint the top book. I'll also leave a link to that video in the description. I just love this pink color. I think it's perfect for Valentine's. I painted the top book only and tried to get as little paint as possible on the bottom book. I wanted my books to be two different colors. After painting the books, I used my hot air gun to dry the paint quicker. I applied a second layer of paint and used my hot air gun again to dry the paint. Next, I used a sanding block to rough up the paint and give the book stack a rustic, worn look. I also used my Cricut weeder to remove the paint from between the books. 
I used rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to remove all the dust from the books. I used my Cricut and cut out the saying, Love Never Fails. Using transfer paper, I applied the saying to the spine of the books. I used some of this ribbon I got in the baby shower section at Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the book stack and hot glued it on the back. I then did the same thing with a piece of twine on top of the ribbon. I think the stack books turned out perfect and I love it on my tiered tray. Next, I decided to make a beaded garland for my tiered tray. I used 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter beads to create the garland. I strung them onto a piece of string and took them outside and painted them. While the beads dried, I painted this little mason jar shaped tag with the same homemade chalk paint I used on the book stack. I also roughed up the tag the same way I had on the books. I used this SVG file from Design Bundles and sized, cut, and weeded it. I used transfer paper to apply the vinyl onto the tag. I used some red HTV for the hearts in the back of the truck. After aligning the hearts up with the truck, I used my iron to set the HTV and to melt the vinyl into the cracks and crevices of the wood tag. I used matte Mod Podge to seal the tag and give it a finished look. To string the beads, I used a collapsible eye needle I picked up in the bead section of Michael's. I continued stringing the beads until I had used all of them for the garland. I slid one end of the string through the hole of the tag and tied a knot to hold the tag into place. I left a longer piece of string hanging after I tied the tag on because I wanted to add a tassel to the ends of the garland and I would need this string to do that. For the tassel, I used ribbon and twine. I cut all the pieces about the same length. I then stacked them up and used a piece of string to tie them in the middle. I then used a longer piece of twine added a dab of hot glue to the tassel and wrapped the twine around the top until I liked the way it looked. I used another dab of hot glue at the bottom and trimmed the twine. I then used the string from the garland and tag and tied it to the string from the tassel. I used a small dab of glue to make sure the knot didn't come undone and then cut off the excess string. I did the same thing on the other end of the garland using the same ribbon and twine. Next, I trimmed both tassels and unraveled a couple of pieces of the twine on each end. And just look at how sweet this garland turned out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. For this cute little mug, I use this $5 tea set from Family Dollar. I looked for one at Dollar Tree and couldn't find one. All I really needed out of this whole set was the little teacups. So if you can find kid sized teacups at Dollar Tree, I would recommend just using them. I used a Dollar Tree sanding block to rough up the outside of the plastic so my paint would stick. I then took the teacups outside and spray painted them with white spray paint. 
I found these adorable faces and chocolate drippings on design bundles. I'll leave links to both of these in the description. I used my Cricut to size them and cut them out. I painted the rim of the cup and the front with Mod Podge and dried it with my hot air gun. This way I knew the chocolate dripping and the faces would both adhere correctly to the plastic. I didn't use transfer paper for the chocolate. I simply removed it from the vinyl backing and applied it to the rim of the cup. I did try using transfer paper, but it just didn't work right. I used transfer tape and layered the face on the transfer tape and then applied it to the front of the cup. I used half a round floral foam ball in the bottom of the cup to help hold up the caulk. I cut the caulking tube at an angle and started applying it to the mug. Once the caulk was at a good level, I used some colorful foam beads, some pink and purple glass beads, a foam valentine heart, and a cut off paper straw, all from Dollar Tree, to decorate the top. I just love the way this little mug turned out. It's the perfect size for a tiara tray, and it's just so stinking cute. To create the little tiered tray cupcakes, I used a couple of donuts out of this set I got from Dollar Tree. And some paper cupcake holders. I simply placed the donuts in the bottom of the cupcake holders. I used my caulk again to create the frosting on top of the cupcakes. I filled in the center hole of each donut first. I then started applying the caulk like you would with frosting onto a cupcake. Once I had both cupcakes covered, I began decorating them. I used some pink foam beads, pink and purple glass beads, and the little foam valentine stickers from Dollar Tree. While the caulk was drying, I realized the paper was starting to flatten out because of the weight of the caulk. I used a couple of these little red bowls from Dollar Tree and placed the cupcakes in them until the caulk was dry. That seemed to have fixed the problem. And just look at how stinking cute these little cupcakes turned out. And they are the perfect size for that Valentine's tier tray. I decided I needed a gnome, of course. I used an old pill bottle and these cute kid socks from Dollar Tree. To start, I inserted the pill bottle into a white sock, but you could still see the pill bottle, so I placed another sock over the first one. I used a piece of string to tie the top of the white sock. I then took the little pink striped sock and added it to the top for the hat. I used a mop head and cut little pieces of rope off for the beard. I had used this mop head in a previous video, so I just cut the short pieces of the rope. After I cut the short strings, I folded them in half and cut them again to make them shorter. I used a piece of cardstock to glue the rope onto. I have found this is easier than gluing it directly to the gnome. I put down a little bit of glue and then pressed the strings into the glue. I wanted the beard to be thicker, so I used more rope and glued it to the top of the rope I had placed on the cardstock. I did this across the entire first layer. I then held the beard up to the gnome to position it. I took the hat off and applied glue to the cardstock on the beard. I aligned the beard and stuck it to the gnome. 
Once the glue was holding, I pulled the edge of the white sock down over the start of the beard. I used a pink foam ball for the nose and simply glued it to the gnome. I replaced the pink sock hat. I trimmed the beard with scissors. I decided I wanted to give him arms and have him hold a little heart. I used pink felt to create the arms. I cut it down to size and hot glued it in a roll and glued it to the gnome. I tried to center the arms up with the nose. I then used a red felt sticker for him to hold. I still wasn't happy with his hat. I took a piece of white string and tied it at the top and then trimmed the top of the hat a little. I then added another heart sticker to the center of his hat. Perfect. I think this is my favorite little gnome so far. He is just so stinking cute. Last but not least is this cute Be Mine mini jar. I used a clear jar from Dollar Tree. The jar actually came with seashells in it. I poured them out to use for another project later. I took the jar outside and spray painted it pink. I found this SVG file on Design Bundles and thought it would be perfect for this little jar. After sizing, cutting, and weeding the vinyl, I applied it to the jar using transfer paper. I used these little heart picks from Dollar Tree and cut them down. I decided to add ribbon to each of them. I got this ribbon in the baby shower section at Dollar Tree. I thought it would be perfect for Valentine's decor. I tied a simple bow, and if you follow me on a regular basis, you know no bow is simple for me. And then glued them to the stick of each heart. I used a piece of white string and wrapped it around the neck of the jar and tied it in the back. I used various pieces of sprigs, cut them down to size, and placed them around the hearts to complete the look. And just look how sweet the little bottle turned out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I love decorating tea trays. They have become a huge decor piece in homes. I'm trying to create some new items for my Valentine's Day tea tray. So I decided since I had some leftover Dollar Tree foam dice, I would make a couple of cute little marshmallows for my tiered tray this Valentine season. I purchased a cute face bundle from Design Bundles for this project. Just look at some of these cute little faces that were in this bundle. I will leave a link in the description for the bundle I used. To get started, I opened up Design Space and added a square the size of one side of the foam dice. I then clicked on Upload File, Upload File again, and then drove the image I wanted from the folder to Design Space. I added the image to my design and sized it to fit on the foam dice. I did the same thing for the other design I wanted to use. I held down shift and clicked on all the black areas of the first design. Then I clicked weld. I did the same with the pink areas and then I grouped the welded images together. By doing this, you have welded the parts together, which means when you cut the image, the pieces will be together instead of spread all over the mat. I did the exact same thing with the second design. I then hid both the hearts and the square by clicking the eye beside them. I sent the file to my Cricut. As you can see, the cuts are pretty small. I was able to use the scrap piece of black vinyl 
and also a scrap piece of pink vinyl for this project. This is how I laid the vinyl out on the mat. I matched it up in design space and then sent the file to my Cricut to be cut. After the vinyl was cut, I flipped the mat over and removed both the black and pink vinyl. I trimmed both and weeded them. To cover the foam dice, I used three Dollar Tree white balloons on each dice. I cut the neck off of the balloon and stretched them over the dice. I wanted the marshmallows to have cute little hats. I used some Dollar Tree felt, folded it in the middle, and cut it in half. I wrapped it around the dice and trimmed it. On one of them, I folded and hot glued the felt to make it look like it was rolled up. I then hot glued the felt to the dice and ran the glue down the hat to close it up. I then used a piece of string to tie to the top of the hat. I then transferred the face to transfer paper and put the vinyl on the dice to create the adorable marshmallow. On the second one, I decided to not make the fold, so I just hot glued the felt and trimmed it. I used another piece of string to tie the hat. I decided to let the top of the hat lean to one side and used hot glue to hold it in place. I then applied the face the same way I had to the first one. These are the cutest little marshmallows I have ever seen. They look amazing on my tiara tray. If you tray. haven't already, go ahead I and can't like wait this to video and subscribe to my channel. Just look I at how weekly home they decor are. DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting! Hi all my crafty friends and welcome back to Designs by Gaddis. If you're new here, welcome and I hope you like this video and subscribe to my channel. By liking this video, you will help others just like yourself be able to find my home decor videos more easily. Today I will be showing you how I created this adorable Be Mine mug and floral arrangement using items from Dollar Tree. After the vinyl was cut, I removed it from the mat by pulling the mat away from the vinyl. This helps to keep the vinyl from rolling, usually, but as you can see, mine rolled anyway. I trimmed the vinyl, weeded it, and applied it to the transfer paper. I used rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to remove any dirt and oils from the cup. This helps the vinyl to adhere to the mug better. I applied the vinyl to the mug, making sure the lettering was straight. And then removed the transfer paper. I used a thin piece of fabric and my iron to heat the vinyl and help it to adhere to the mug. And that was it. This is a simple DIY and can be used on so many different objects or given as a gift. After I finished the mug, I decided I wanted to add some Dollar Tree roses to it. I poured a bag full of foam balls into the mug to help hold the roses in place. I had picked up some of the light pink roses from Dollar Tree on my weekly adventure. I cut them down so they would fit into the mug and started placing them in the mug. After I had them the way I wanted, I added some small pieces of baby's breath. I only had two pieces, but I think I will get more and add it to the arrangement also. The roses and the mug turned out so good together. I just love it. 
and it looks amazing for my other decor for Valentine's. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I got this cute chalkboard in a craft bundle I purchased off of Marketplace. I think it came from Michael's originally. I was going to use this ribbon to start with, but then I found a cuter one in my stash that I decided to use. This cut file was actually free on Design Bundles. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. After cutting and weeding the file, I removed it using transfer paper and applied it to the chalkboard stand. I forgot to use alcohol to clean the board, so some of the letters didn't want to stick. I first tried using my hot air gun to heat the vinyl up, but that didn't work. So I used my iron to help the letters stick a little. After removing the transfer paper, I used my iron again to heat the vinyl so it would melt into the chalkboard pattern. This gave it more of a hand painted look. I found this ribbon in my stash and thought it would look better on the chalkboard. I applied a thin layer of Mod Podge and placed the ribbon on it, making sure it was straight. I used Mod Podge instead of hot glue because the Mod Podge dries clear and I knew some of the glue would leak through the ribbon. I started to apply the ribbon to the bottom also, but decided it looked better just on the top. I turned the chalkboard over and used hot glue to attach the ribbon to the back corners. I applied the hot glue to both corners and pressed the ribbon down into it. Just look at how stinking cute this is. And it looks great next to my tiered tray. And now for the love potion jar. I got this cute little jar at Dollar Tree. It actually came with seashells in it. I took it outside and spray painted it with some red spray paint. While the paint dried, I used my Cricut and created a cute cut file for the bottle. When the paint was dry, I applied the vinyl using transfer paper to the bottle. The bottle was cute just like it was, but I wanted something else. I used some white string and a little pink heart from Dollar Tree. I made a hole in the top corner of the heart and strung the string through it. I wrapped the string around the top of the bottle and cut the extra string off. And look how cute it turned out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Today I will be unboxing, dyeing, and creating this beautiful Solo Wood Flowers Valentine's hanging. I purchased a 50 random wood flowers bundle and the Cozy Coop assortment from Solo Wood Flowers a while back and thought this would be the perfect time to create a project with them. These flowers are beautiful and can be used in so many different ways and for so many different projects. I will leave a link in the description below for the two bundles that I use in this video. After opening the box and cutting into the packaging, I wanted to show you how adorable these wood flowers are. This is the 50 random bundle. And look at how cute this little rose is. And look at this one with the wood still around it. This is a bigger rose. Let's just dump the bag out and take a look at all of them. Look at this one. It is big and beautiful. Another rose. I just love all of them. And now for the Cozy Coop assortment. Oh, look at this cute little flower. 
and this one. Oh, the things I can do with it. And this one. And this one. Oh, and look at this one. It is just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Can't wait to find a project to use it on. I'm not going to be using all of them, just the roses from both sets. To start the project, I use this heart shape sign from Dollar Tree. I removed the hanger from it and stained it using antiquing wax. I stained the front, back, and the sides. I thought I was going to have enough flowers to cover the entire sign and just a small amount of the wood would be showing through. I love the natural look of the flowers, but for Valentine's, I wanted to dye them different colors. I filled four glass bowls up with warm water for me to mix the paint in to dye the flowers. I wanted an even amount of each color, so I sorted the flowers out and placed them in front of each of the bowls. The first color I used was a really deep red. I squeezed a good amount of paint into the water and then used a plastic knife to mix it up. I dipped the first flower into the mixture but the color was too light. So I added more paint and started again. I continued dipping the flower to make sure everything was covered and fully saturated with the color. I then placed the flower in a cardboard box to dry. Sorry, the box is actually sitting on a stool next to me and not in the shot. I did the same dipping process with all of the flowers for the deep red color. I would recommend wearing gloves to do this. Since I am using acrylic paint, I was able to wash my hands, but the color was under my nails after finishing. If I would have had on gloves, I could have just changed them with every color instead of having to go wash my hands each time and having the paint under my fingernails. Next, I used a light pink. I didn't have as much paint in the bottle as I thought, so I just dipped it into the water and shook it up and poured it back into the water. I stirred the paint and water and then dipped my first flower. After I dipped the first flower, I realized it was too light so I added a small amount of the deep red to just give it a little more color. By doing this, the color was perfect. I did the same process as I did with the deep red to stain all the pink flowers, simply dipping them into the dye mixture. The next color I used was gray, and the final color was red. With some of the red flowers, I would dip the tips into the deep red just to give it some variation. This is the box I use to hold my flowers and to let them dry overnight. It is recommended to let your flowers dry for 24 hours. After 24 hours, my flowers were still a little damp and that worked great. When the flowers are damp, you are able to move some of the petals slightly. When they're dry, they are hard like wood. Okay guys, I'm sorry, but the only view I have is this side view. I hit record on this camera and thought I had on the top view camera, but apparently not. But this is the way the flowers looked after drying for 24 hours. I placed them on the heart just to get an idea of how I wanted to arrange them. I used my hot glue gun to place the flowers on the heart. Some of the flowers had these long stems at the bottom. With the flowers still being damp, it was easy to just cut the ends off. Just make sure you don't cut the string that holds everything together. I continued gluing the wood flowers to the heart until I had used all the flowers. I tried to keep the colors mixed up without having a bunch of one color in one area. After getting all the roses glued down, I used some reindeer moss I had in my stash to fill in the holes. I knew this was going to be a cute project 
but it actually turned out better than I was hoping. I love these solo wood flowers and I definitely recommend them for your next floral project. I plan on doing more videos using these flowers and showing you all the different ways you can use them. Be sure to click the link in the description and check out all the different sets Solo Wood Flowers offers. I guarantee you will love them too. To make the adorable Tierre Tray sign, I used a wood coaster from Michaels. These are perfect for Tierre Tray signs and they stand up on their own. I think I paid like $5 for a pack of four. I removed the little pads from the bottom because this was the smoothest side. I used my fingers and a glue eraser from Dollar Tree to remove the stickiness under the pads. I then stained the entire wood block with antiquing wax. After I let the wax dry, I used white acrylic paint to paint the entire block and used my hot air gun to dry it quicker. Let me tell you, this hot air gun saves me so much time when I'm working on projects. I'll leave a link in the description of the hot air gun I got from Amazon. It's the one I use and recommend highly. I then used a Dollar Tree sanding block to give the sign a rustic weathered look. I paid more attention to the sides than I did the front and the back. Once I had the look I wanted, I used some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to remove all the sand dust from the wood. The rubbing alcohol dries quicker than water, that's why I use it. I found this cute file in a Valentine's bundle from Design Bundles and thought it would be cute on this little sign. Instead of using regular vinyl, I decided to use black flock HTV vinyl and red glitter HTV vinyl. I was wanting a different feel for the sign. This was my first time trying this technique and I will probably be using it more often. It's just that HTV is more expensive than regular vinyl. After using my Cricut to size and cut the HTV, I placed the black arrows on the block first and centered it. I then used my iron and a thin piece of fabric to set the vinyl. When I pulled up the backing, it left some of the flocking on the wood. I used my glue eraser again to remove the excess flocking. I then laid the letters, centering them around the arrows, and did the same thing with the iron. The Tierre Tray sign turned out so stinking cute. I'm glad I used the HTV. It gave the little wood sign a little extra texture. I wanted to add a little gnome to my Valentine's decor this year. I picked up this cute Valentine's scarf, kids pair of socks, and had the mop head in my stash. I needed something to make the gnome out of, and the only thing I could find was a small can of chili. So I used it as my base. I placed the can into one of the socks. I could still see the label on the can, so I added the other sock and that fixed the problem. I wanted to use the string from the mop for the beard. I used a piece of cardstock and cut it down. I cut several pieces of the mop and glued them to the cardstock. After I had added two layers of the mop string, I glued the cardstock onto the sock to create the nun's beard. I used a small piece of twine and tied the top sock just to hold the sock in place. For his hat, I used this Valentine's scarf from Dollar Tree and cut it in half. It is a very thin material, so I had to wrap it around the gnome's head several times. To attach the scarf, I would put some glue on the edge of the scarf and roll the can onto the glue. I did this with all of the scarf. For his nose, I used a large red glitter foam ball I got from Dollar Tree in a large pack and glued it in the center of the beard. I also had some felt stickers 
and decided to use a white one on the center lower part of the hat. I removed the backing and just stuck it in place. I wanted the hat to stand up. I used two pipe cleaners, folded them in half, and twisted them together. I wish I would have thought of this before I glued the hat on. It would have been so much easier. I worked my way down from the top of the hat to the edge of the can. Once I found the edge, I used some hot glue and stuck the pipe cleaner into the glue. I placed the second one directly across from the first. And then I did the same thing to the ones on the side. By doing this, my hat had a way to stand up. I moved the layers of the hat back up the pipe cleaner and used a small piece of twine at the top to hold all the fabric in place. I then decided to trim and shape the beard using my scissors. This is the cutest little gnome, and it took me about 10 minutes from start to finish. My Valentine's decor is starting to come together. I have a lot more ideas for this Valentine's season, and I will be sharing them with you. I wanted to make a framed sign for my Valentine's tear tray. I used a little wooden tray from Michael's and painted it with a homemade pink chalk paint. I'll leave a link in the description below for the how to make chalk paint video. I found this adorable cut file in a bundle I purchased from Design Bundles. And I thought it would be adorable in my frame tier tray sign. I centered everything and applied the vinyl to the sign. I tried to use my iron to melt the vinyl into the cracks and crevices of the wood, but I just couldn't get it to fit into the little sign. So I decided to use my hot air gun. I simply heated an area with the hot air gun and then used my fingers to press the vinyl into the wood while it was still warm. I will leave a link below to the hot air gun I use and recommend. It has saved me so much time on projects and it's easy to use. The next step was to apply Mod Podge to the Tier tray sign to seal it and protect it. I have used my hot air gun to dry the Mod Podge in the past, but have found that it causes the glue to bubble. So I wouldn't recommend it for Mod Podge. This little frame Tier tray sign is so stinking cute. I have left a link in the description below for the bundle I got the cut file from in case you're interested. This was a super simple project, especially after I had the sign painted. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I was wanting to make a new tier tray for Valentine's. I picked up two plates from Dollar Tree a while back because I like the shape of them. I also picked up a couple of banister railings from Lowe's a few weeks back. I was originally going to make candle holders, but I decided to go ahead and use it to make this tier tray. Since I am using plates and not having to paint anything, these could also be used to serve food. I took the banister outside and cut it down so it would hold the top plate to the bottom plate. I then used antiquing wax to stain it. I found the center of the bottom plate and applied a large dab of E6000 to the plate and to the center of the wood. I used hot glue around the edge to hold everything in place until the E6000 has time to set up. This usually takes about 24 hours. After I attached the wood to the bottom plate, I did the same thing for the top plate, except I glued the bottom of the plate to the banister. I wanted to add a handle to the top plate. I used another piece of the banister and cut it to the length I wanted. I applied the same antiquing wax as I used before to stain the wood. I found the center of the top plate 
and use E6000 and hot glue again to attach it to the top plate. I had this drawer pull in my stash and decided to add it to the top of the wood. I did this the same way using E6000 and hot glue. This is my best and favorite tier tray I have made so far and I just love it. This was a pretty simple tier tray DIY. If you want to give it a try and have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I read my comments and reply to all of them. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Today I will be showing you how I created this cute Be Mine mug using a Dollar Tree mug. The first thing I did was open up Design Space and added a square the size I wanted for the mug. Then I clicked Add Text and typed out my saying. I wanted to use a Ray Dunn inspired font but couldn't remember the name. I clicked on my browser and went to wordmark.it. You can use this free website to see what your words will look like with any font loaded on your computer. I found the font I wanted, Kitchen Home. I can't remember where I got this font from, but I know it was free, because I never pay for fonts. I went back to Design Space and found the font and applied it to my wording and sized it to fit my square. Since this was a small cutout, I found a piece of scrap black vinyl and applied it to my mat. I then sent the cut file to my Cricut. This was a small cut, so it didn't take long to cut it out. After the vinyl was cut, I removed it from the mat by pulling the mat away from the vinyl. This helps to keep the vinyl from rolling, usually, but as you can see, mine rolled anyway. I trimmed the vinyl, weeded it, and applied it to the transfer paper. I used rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to remove any dirt and oils from the cup. This helps the vinyl to adhere to the mug better. I applied the vinyl to the mug, making sure the lettering was straight. And then removed the transfer paper. I used a thin piece of fabric and my iron to heat the vinyl and help it to adhere to the mug. And that was it. This is a simple DIY and can be used on so many different objects or given as a gift. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I needed some pink chalk paint and didn't have any on hand so I decided to make my own. I only needed a small amount, so I took the recipe I found online and cut it down. What you will need to make a small amount of chalk paint is two tablespoons of baking soda, four tablespoons of paint, the color of your choice, and three fourth tablespoons of water. I wanted a light pink paint, and all I had on hand was Diva Pink. It was a little bright for the sign I wanted to paint. So I added the Diva paint to a clear plastic cup. I didn't measure the paint because the bottle was equal to the amount of paint I needed. I had only used a very small amount out of it. To lighten it up, I added a little white paint. I used a measuring spoon and added the baking soda to the paint and then used it to measure out the water. I used a plastic fork to stir the mixture and remove the clumps. 
I stirred until the mixture was smooth. The color was still a little brighter than I wanted, so I added more white paint to the mixture and continued to stir. And that was it. The mixture was a little more chalky than I liked, so next time I will use a little less baking soda. I added the mixture to a little airtight container from Dollar Tree and used it to paint this cute little tear tray sign. I'll leave a link in the description to the tear tray DIY video. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!